Welcome to your evaluation for kidney transplant at Iowa Methodist Transplant Center. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to write them down and we will answer them later today. Without the organ donor, there is no story, no hope, no transplant. But when there is an organ donor, life springs from death, sorrow turns to hope, and a terrible loss becomes a gift. You know. Our center's philosophy has been to get patients listed and get them transplanted. We have some of the fastest waiting times in the country and have for years. We work hard with each patient. Today, you're going to meet our transplant team. We might be a little biased, but we have a pretty amazing team. Today, you will see the transplant surgeon, transplant nephrologist, transplant coordinator, transplant social worker, transplant financial coordinator, transplant pharmacist, transplant dietitian, and transplant psychologist. There are other treatment options aside from transplant for end-stage renal disease. While there are advantages to transplant, you also have to think about some of the disadvantages. You're on lifelong medications. Side effects to those medications can vary depending on the person. Increased risk of infections and cancers post-transplant due to the medications you'll be taking. Rejection or recurrent disease can happen at any time. There are no guarantees in transplant. We would like to say that once you are transplanted, you will never be admitted again and your kidney will be perfect. That is unfortunately not something that we can promise. We always hope that your transplant journey is one that will be positive, but unfortunately, that's not something we ever know. There are many advantages to transplantation. No more dialysis. If you work, you can return to work. Less dietary restrictions. It's easier to travel and hopefully an improved quality of life. The transplant process can seem overwhelming. We have several phases of transplantation. The referral phase is completed. Your evaluation phase starts today. Testing is done before or after the evaluation based off of the need for each patient. Once all needed information is gathered, we then present your information at listing committee. The listing decision is a group decision that is decided during the committee meeting. This is not a one person decision. The listing committee can approve, deny, or request more information from each patient. The final step is to get you transplanted. There are relative and absolute contraindications to proceeding with transplant. Relative contraindications are things that we need to take a closer look at before proceeding. Those are listed on the left. Absolute contraindications make it so that we have to stop the process and cannot move forward. Those are listed on the right. Sometimes it is difficult to talk about your kidney disease. Finding someone who is willing to talk about your kidney disease for you and who's willing to serve as that champion for you can help you find a living donor. You would be surprised who cares about you and wants to help make a difference. Your donor champion can help get the word out in a variety of creative ways. Send a letter or an email to family and friends explaining the situation and offering to educate them about available options to treat your kidney failure. Create a Facebook page or web page. Get in the bulletin or prayer chain at your place of worship. Host a gathering at home, church, or community center. Invite people to come and learn about kidney disease and treatment options. Share your story with people who care about you. They want to know and appreciate the sincerity. Share everywhere, at the grocery store, on the bus, anywhere. Living donation is a great option for kidney transplant. There are multiple options for living donation, related, unrelated, humanitarian, altruistic, or paired exchange. Humanitarian or altruistic donor is someone who comes forward to donate to someone they do not know, only to help another person. Paired exchange, if you or your donor do not match, we look at an internal exchange or a national exchange. Living donation is your best option. Sharing your need is the best way to identify a potential living donor. 
Talk to our team about ways to share your story and your transplant journey. When you share your story, it can empower someone to step forward and choose to be a living donor. Fun facts. Living donor transplants tend to last longer and they are performed in a more controlled environment. Living donors do not lose half of their kidney function. They only lose about 30% of their kidney function after donation. The remaining kidney becomes a better filter. Tissue typing is what tells us the match between you and your donor. This is part of what we use to determine if you are a match with the donor kidney. The PRA. Once you are on the list, you will be expected to send in a blood sample each month. This tracks your antibody level and helps the lab in completing your cross match to determine if you are compatible with your donor, living or deceased. This is very important to do every month while you're waiting. The cross match, this is the matching between you and your donor. Our HLA lab will take your blood and the donor's blood together to see how the cells react. We want a negative cross match. We perform virtual and physical cross matches depending on the situation. This is why it is very important that you get your PRAs done monthly when you are listed for transplant. Each recipient gets a score as well as the donor. We as a center look at these scores, but they are not the only criteria when accepting a kidney for you. The recipient scoring is called EPTS or Estimated Post-Transplant Survival. This gives an estimation on how long the recipient may need a kidney in comparison to the other recipients also listed for kidney transplant. The EPTS score looks at a few things, age, time on dialysis, previous history of transplant, and diabetes status. KDPI or Kidney Donor Profile Index is a score that is given to the deceased donor. This is a score that each deceased donor kidney is given. It is an estimation or prediction of how long the new kidney will last. This score is based off of the donor's risk factors at the time of donation. There are several criteria such as age, height, weight, cause of death, health status, risk factors that the donors have. This score is not the only criteria that determines the acceptance of a kidney. This is a very small piece that the surgeon looks at. We look at the biopsy at the time of donation, the pump numbers and how well the kidney flushes. The surgeon will review anatomy from the recovering surgeon. The surgeon will also look at the kidney once it has arrived and can turn it down at that time if they feel they need to. KDPI is looked at, but there are several other factors that go into account as well. We will review KDPI further during your evaluation. We offer patients the opportunity to receive kidneys from donors that are hepatitis C positive. If you consent to be listed for hepatitis C kidneys and receive a kidney from a hepatitis C positive donor, you will be treated for hepatitis C and will be monitored for this closer than recipients that do not receive a hepatitis C kidney. You will receive medications for the treatment of hepatitis C to prevent you from developing the virus. We follow your hepatitis C viral loads and have you see our Center for Liver Disease to closely monitor you. Treatment for hepatitis C starts on the day of transplant. Current treatment for hepatitis C is successful greater than 98% of the time. Listing for hep C positive kidneys can open additional opportunities for more organ offers and potentially getting transplanted quicker. Every patient has the right to list at as many centers as they wish. Each patient is responsible to complete the evaluation process and required testing for each center they list at. Being listed at more than one center can increase your chances of being transplanted. All surgeons and centers have different accepting practices pending on their comfort level. We work hard as a center to get you transplanted. The question we get asked a lot is why multiple listing is so important even in the same state or region. We bring the kidney here and look at it. Look at the big picture, not just a small picture in time. If you have wait time at any center, you have the right to transfer that wait time to another center. You can have your primary wait time at one center. This can be used to your advantage and get you transplanted faster. Listed patients will be seen every six months or yearly. This will be determined by the transplant center and communicated to you. 
Remember to send in your PRA once a month. If you do not send in the PRA each month, this can affect your status on the waitlist and can affect your status for virtual cross-matching, therefore eligibility for kidneys. Patients who live outside of Iowa are required to have a travel plan set up prior to active listing. The requirement is that from the time of the organ offer, you can get to the transplant center within eight hours. Your insurance may have flight or travel benefits. Check with your insurance company on what they cover for expenses. Out-of-state patients are also required to stay in the Des Moines area for a minimum of four weeks post-transplant. It is expected that any changes in your medical condition is reported to the transplant center. This helps ensure your candidacy and health for kidney transplant while waiting on the wait list. Your care partner is the person that will be helping you at home after your transplant. They will need to be with you for your post-transplant education. It is important after transplant to record your weight every morning, your temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate every morning and every evening. You will record everything you drink and everything you pee. If you have a drain, you will record how much you empty out of it. You will need to bring all of your recordings with you to transplant clinic. Your discharge medications will be brought to your hospital room. You will need to have your home medications available as well. We will help you put your pill box together before you go home. You may be on some of the same medications after transplant that you took before transplant. It is an important role as the care partner to help each recipient be successful after transplant. As a care partner, there are some expectations that the transplant team has that will help. Being present at the time of the transplant surgery and being available during the day while the recipient is admitted for education and rounding of the transplant team. If you work, make sure you're able to take time off work at the time of the transplant surgery, while the recipient is in the hospital and after the transplant. Have reliable transportation to be able to provide transportation while the recipient is on pain medications in an emergent situation or to transport the recipient to and from procedures if the patient is unable to drive. Have a reliable phone with voicemail that you know how to use, being available at all times if the transplant team should need to reach you. Be able to run errands as needed for the patient, such as going to the pharmacy, getting groceries, and picking up supplies. Be able to assist or arrange help to aid the recipient with normal activities throughout the day, such as providing meals, helping with laundry, and providing a clean environment. Willing to assist with taking daily vital signs, blood pressure, weight, temperature, and measuring the intake and output. Be comfortable with assisting with medication changes and that you can make the medication changes if the recipient is unable to do so. Be able to lift greater than 10 pounds. Ensure you are comfortable with dressing changes if needed, with the understanding that the incision is in an area where you may see the recipient unclothed. Understand that there may be some training involved with learning how to do these. Be able to assist in drain care if this is needed. This includes emptying drains, measuring the output, and watching for infection. Understand that there may be some training involved with learning how to do this. Have a backup plan if the primary care partner is unavailable due to unforeseen circumstances. Notify the transplant team if there are any changes to this plan. Be able to read and understand the education provided verbally and what is provided in the patient education folder and able to help ensure all required paperwork is done for discharge. Also understand that as a care partner, you must take time to prevent your own burnout. Understand that you need to get adequate rest and nutrition. Be aware that you may feel frustrated, fatigued, and overwhelmed. Ask for help and notify the transplant team if you need any assistance. The transplant team is willing to help you get through this process too and can help provide support in many ways. The transplant team determines the medication regimen each patient will have after transplant. This is a team decision based off a of protocol with each individual patient's medical history taken into consideration for the determination. The medications most commonly used are listed here. Likely after transplant, you will be on a combination of these. Being compliant with your medications will help keep your kidney from rejecting. 
Rejection does not mean that you will lose your kidney, but it can scar your kidney, decreasing the amount of time your kidney will work. Women of childbearing age need to keep in mind that they may have periods again after transplant. Pregnancy post-transplant needs to be planned. We recommend that you wait at least two years after your transplant to become pregnant. Women of childbearing age, the transplant center will be, need to be notified prior to a pregnancy as your medication regimen will likely need to be changed. Some of the transplant medications can cause severe birth defects, so it is important to change your medications before you become pregnant. Some transplant kidneys can take a while to open up and filter. You may need to do dialysis for a while after your transplant. This does not mean your kidney is not going to work. We are a team. It is important that we know right away if you are having a medical problem. You will need to call when you are sick or if you are having problems getting your medications. If you're having a medical emergency, call 911. If you need to be admitted, we want you to be admitted here at our hospital. Labs will be completed two to three times a week. Lab frequency will be determined at the time of discharge. Follow-up will be weekly for the first four weeks and then at three, six, nine, and 12 months. Once you have reached one year post-transplant, your follow-up will be yearly at the transplant center. If you are experiencing complications related to your transplant, you may need to come to additional transplant clinic visits. If you are having complications not related to your transplanted kidney, we will work with your local providers. Keep in mind that every transplant center operates differently. It takes an entire team to ensure the success of your transplant. You are an important part of this team. Ensuring open communication between the patient and the care team helps the care team take care of you. Welcome to the team.